Hello there everyone and welcome back. I gotta say, there is some method to my madness there in my mirror matches with the town it seems like. Cause I'm going with saucés that do not have adapted deflector and if I was a little bit better with my control there I probably would have performed even better or would have won better in that mirror match cause like I said I don't have adapted deflector on my any of my saucés so keeping them at range would have been ideal especially if they get focus, focus down. My Bastion took a lot of Seeker Missiles in the rear, which probably did not help in it staying alive for as long as it did. It probably took a quite a notable amount of damage. Hell, I would argue maybe it took more damage to my own Seeker Missiles than from the enemy team. Never mind the fact I locked on instead of Brace for Impact when I was doing that aggressive dive, but I still feel like there's some merit to the flanking strategy that I'm utilizing, as opposed to all the other tower players I've been paired up with, who like to go in a nice big death ball. So... Considering the fact we were fighting our entire Earth Cache fleet, I like to think that's promise. And also, I made one interesting little change here, mainly because I did not want to feel the stronghold for whatever reason, because I like these Bastions, these Demiurgs, more for like the flanking ambush potential, especially with the cutting laser. So, with reading the comments over the YouTube video, I decided to bring in the Space Ball. I have decided to bring in the Crew War Spear. And this may seem silly, but. Looking over it properly, it has the damage potential of a Sauce while being the same point cost. Not to mention the fact it does have a thousand health and while it doesn't have the deflectors, it doesn't have the armor, it's still pretty durable and beefy. And more often than not, if I'm using the Demiurg, I'm kind of like playing more slower and passive anyway. So that way the Demiurg can, can either get their charge in or get an, oper an ideal flank position in. Although ultimately, I feel like the Demiurg are probably better suited, at least for whatever the match throws at me there. I feel like the the Crew War Spear is going to be a little more trickier to utilize just because of its mobility. Sure, it's 75 speed, so it is quite notably slower than was it an Emperor or is, was it a Orc Death Dealer, but it still has good firepower for the part price point. Never mind the fact it's 360 degrees in hell. I may not even use this thing to get in close and aggressive, so my priority is trying to extend the range on these things. And once, if I can ever get to level 6, I'm thinking of maybe using acquisition systems on top of the magnetic accelerators to give this thing 12,000 range. So, if nothing else, it serves in this amazing uh, area of denial type of ship. It keeps them away from the Kroot War Spear a notable amount of distance, but I don't think I'll be using this against like Utter Tau. Utter's Chaos, anything that's going to be based on either keeping distance or utilizing their mobility and range, so it will be tricky to figure out how to best use this. Alright, it is showtime, and I somehow seriously question using the, the Crew War Spear on Space Marines probably is a terrible idea, considering how the War Spear functions. Every time it gets a critical hit, it can only take a hull breach, I believe, although I've seen this thing get fire results, so that's possibly a bug as well, but. This thing is basically a frigate, or frigate for all intents and purposes a critical hit, so I think dealing with bombardment cans is probably a terrible idea with that said. Not to mention the fact bombers are incredibly good against space marines in general, at least against the strike cruisers and vanguards if they don't try to avoid them. Now with that said, let's bring the bastion in, and I have enough points for two saucés and no frigates, so we gotta be smart with our beacons, which shouldn't be too much of an issue. I do like having some form of extended sensors though, so I really need to think later on down the road if I want to throw some extended sensors on these ships. At least the protectors anyway, because they're supposed to be the ones in front. They're probably not going to be as impactful when dealing with bombardment cans, but at least the broadside weaponry and torpedoes are going to be really good. Never mind the Thunderhawks. So, they're going to be used for there. Oh my god, look at all the gas clouds the Space Marine has utilized. So. This could be a bit of a problem. I do have an asteroid belt here, but I, how comfortable am I putting the, ba the Bastion here? It should get its charge real easily, it seems way too obvious, and it is going to be close to fighting if I want to use it for ambushing. It, it should work ultimately really well, but I don't know how much I like it. I like something a little more out of the way to kind of catch them off guard, if nothing else. We'll see what happens though, but Saw says I want to kind of hang back some more. So let's just have them deploy just slightly a bit back. At least that makes it a lot more easier for me to manage. And I want Monka for critical hits, I think. 
Because I don't think I'm going to get to utilize my range the best with that said. Since he's going to want to get in close and he has kind of the mobility I do. At least if he's using strike cruises and that. So we got sensors coming out. This will be pretty easy to ignore or avoid. You hold fire Demiurg. We'll hold on to your possibilities later. And he's firing two beacons, so neither of which I have to worry about the bashing getting revealed, but it just naturally allows me to move my ships out of the way, so the bastion will be free to do its own thing and maybe catch him off guard. But three ships. This looks like double battle bars, so we're gonna we're gonna be in for a serious fight. I do have my belt armor probably still gonna get revealed, but I don't think I wanna burn assault run, regardless. Even though I have an easy answer to deal with his boring torpedoes if his Demi push comes to shove. Responding. I just gotta be careful. I don't have a custodian for an easy way to kill said My battle barges, so let's be way. careful regardless. I will deal with his Sunderhawks and boring torpedoes relatively well, at least until he gets in close. But if he's going with double battle barges, I can easily outmaneuver him too with my higher speed and mobility. Now, the big question, do I infest any beacons to try and snipe that frigate quickly? Okay, here comes the dump fire torpedoes, so I don't have a messenger to help in this regard, but I do have the fighters and torpedoes aren't even going to hit me, at least so far. And he did solid run with this thing, so it's not its not even worth trying to engage. And at least throw a beacon just yet, and lack of extent sensor is going to be a pain. At least partially. Switching to cruising speed. But that's not a risk. Hell, we're going to shoot down all torpedoes immediately. Then keep an eye out for where he's going. Demio Just charge up that beam. The charge up the beam. We'll take our time with this. And I can fire a beacon at this almost immediately. Have an enemy Your so... Let's get this going. Well, that's fine by me. Let's hold fire. Focus on the weaponry. Sadly, he is a newer player with his level 5 ships, but this should be fun. This is going to be a good test of my fleet strengths. Oh, that's convenient. I thought I had boring torpedoes and everything all set up, but we're going to have to be careful here. Do a lot of damage. Cri cripple these weaponry. Oh, and he has lances. Well, he has lances on one of them, at least. No, I don't want you going like that. Jeez. I don't know what happened there, but okay. Get moving. We're going to disengage. This is going to be a little bit awkward, but... It gives the Bastion time to get ready. Come on, get moving, dammit. I, unless I turn it off by accident. That's a possibility, too. So, gotta be careful here. Oh, and I burnt a lot of boosters too, so let's be careful. Bastion's still in shape, but... Oh, and he's micro-warp jumping, perfect. So he can't dodge this if I do this right. We gotta make sure his shields stay on mind. You for this to work as well as I like, but... But we do have the Bastion to kind of jump this thing. We need to kill the shields first. This is probably the worst target to shoot at, mind you, but it works. Because we know that one, we know that jump, so I'm going to jump it now. Now, unload on this poor little bugger, because this is going to be hurt. This is not going to be pretty. I did lose my saw sail last, so this could. That's unfortunate. Let's keep hitting this thing. Because his belt arm is also gone, so... Alright, keep on hitting. Kill this battle barge. And I was hoping you think these things would keep on moving, but I think their pathing is rebelling a little bit, so... Get the repair drones going. Focus at point-blank range. Kill this thing now. It needs to die immediately. Hopefully it dies immediately. Although, that was probably a bad... Yeah, that was a bad charge beam there. Now disengage, get the hell out. And I did soak a lot of those torpedoes as a bonus. That was a nice little bonus, I'm not gonna lie. Since I got so close with those torpedoes, they failed to do any real damage. 
I don't think those are going to do the damage they want, but this might hurt my Bastion quite a bit. Now, get moving. Finish this thing off the belt. The bombardment cans are going to ruin my day if I'm not careful. And this thing needs to die quick, too. Because it's doing guaranteed damage. This Bastion can keep on hitting. And, oh, I'm going to hit myself with my own Seeker Missile, so that's a bit unfortunate. Come on, kill these things. All I want is one of these things to die. It's not going to do it, though. It is not going to do it in that regard. If only it was a that thing. This whole fire's a whole position of burn retros is also not helping me in this regard very well. Because once it, one of these things dies, this helps a lot to alleviate my concerns. But we'll see what happens there. I have a beacon. Ah, uh, dang it, that was a bit of a waste, alas, but... And engines are also gone. Just kill this thing already. Try to. Because that's what I need most right now, is to greatly hinder this firepower. But I can maybe dodge this? Okay, dodge the bomb, bombardment cans. Luckily there, I just need those hits. Once one of these things dies, that'll help a lot. No, don't execute. Okay, one problem down. But this is also the scary one, but... Sebastian just needs to charge up his beam, I think, is what I want more than anything. And also, yeah, you can be hit and just fine, perfect. So disengage a little bit. Try and do some damage to this. And like I said, just charge up this cutting laser for another nice but massive assault in a moment. Although I am about to get revealed, but that should be good in that regard. I just have no beacon, but that's fine. This benefits me some. Because I can get repairs. Yeah, repairs are about to come up. I have a micro warp jump available. This should in theory be in my favor. Let's just get fighters up for this thing to help. Oh, and he's fire boring torpedoes. We can fix that too, quite easily. Now, only thing left that I could possibly do is to get repair drones off on the Switching Bastion to help its durability some. Surveying location. Okay, we got good charge here. I hope it's still trying to charge its laser. That's what I'm kind of hoping right now. And that Something battle barge right now is really there. damn close to a s protector wreck, so I could abuse that as well. Also, I have dumb fire torpedoes. Let's not forget about that. Because that will be really handy in this regard. Maybe not as much as I would think, but it's still pretty damn handy. And he's giving away his position with the, the Stormhawk, so... Alright, dodge these torpedoes, that's easy enough to do. Charge is almost complete. Now we just gotta soften up and kill the shields. So gotta be very careful, because again, lack of extended sensors. And he's been boosting to kind of give himself away. But I don't want to micro warp jump unless I know he doesn't have his own micro warp jumps. Oh, and he preemptively supercharged, so that's fine. So let the supercharge go. Let the fighters do their things. Hopefully shoot down that. Now... Kill this thing quickly and hopefully dodge these bombardment cans a fair bit. These shields need to die. Come on, kill it. All I wanted is shields to die. Do this one little thing for me. And he doesn't... He doesn't have a micro warp jump, so we know what we're doing here, I guess. No, stop turning. Although I did use up all the power anyway, so that's fine in that regard. I think we won this. I think we won this. I feel sloppier than it could have been in a lot of seat, but... We did at least get some experience. This protector is going to be one step closer to its level 8 that it needs. Now, it just needs to die. Thank you. Yeah, that was more problematic than it needs to be. A lot of it does come down to the fact I don't have... 
effective means to pierce the armor outside the Bastion. At least for that match, anyway. A custodian would be amazing for obvious reasons there. Provided I can make sure I spread out his two battle barges to make sure he's not shooting down a good amount of them before they get in bombing range. Because that would be damn brutal and adapt adaptive deflector actually wouldn't help me in any regard there because he's ignoring my armor more often than not. Even if I do, even if I have 25 armor on the shields, it wouldn't mean much there when I can't evade him very effectively. So, one more battle for this to get level 8, and everything else is wounded pretty much, so that's a little unfortunate. I feel like I could have done that better if I paid more attention, had more, was op more open-minded about bombardment mechanics, I could actually evade them to a vague extent. With just, well, just turning as they're firing, because they have incredibly long rate of fire, 15 seconds, so if I'm fast enough to kind of time that, since after all the boosters do reduce my accuracy if I have them going while I'm, well, while he, when he fires them. But that's something I will need to be actively trying because I feel, felt, that felt like I could have done a lot better. Those battle barges were a little more problematic than I would like, but at least the Bastion did its part. Alright, it looks like we have a rematch here, and, and in all seriousness, if I really want to have an easy time dealing with Devil Battle Barges, we go with the three Protectors and fit in the Bastion for good measure, and this gives me a Messenger to help easily deal with the Thunderhawks, and at least it allows me to be more aggressive. But, this almost seems like I'm hard countering a little bit, I don't think I like it if I were to be honest. But I am interested, interested to see the result here. Because the Saucers are pretty limited in their uses as we come to find out. Never mind the fact they did die relatively quickly due to the bombardment cans uh, armor piercing potential. But if I'm going to have to break a battle barge relatively quickly there, and it's ideally before it can get a second supercharged void shielding for whatever reason and take full advantage of the torpedo cutting beam, then I'm going to need all the armor piercing potential I can get. And this is probably it outside the custodian there and the custodian would kind of be relegated to staying at a good distance unless I'm certain I could kill the entire fleet but with his uh, battle barge being ship level 2 he may not even have the renown to repair both those poor things so I could be just being a bully and kicking him while he's down come to think of it not much we can do I suppose because that double battle barge fleet was a little bit brutal for me I could have definitely handled it better, probably spread out my fleet a little bit more to keep, make it easier for him to stay at long range, so that way the accuracy of the bombardment cans wouldn't hit him as much. That would be a thought anyway. It's something I might seriously consider, but we have asteroid belts. I think I want to charge the beam over there, rather than the one that's already in my deployment zone. Unless there's always the possibility if there's wreckage, nearby that I can utilize too, because that also counts, it just doesn't show on the mini-map in any form. And it doesn't look like he's actually using the battle barges this time, this time. so I could be doing a horrible thing. So, we'll bring... We'll send in the Bastion only if necessary in that case. We'll try and focus on just the three uh, protectors to give him a hard time. And then we'll bring in the ace in our sleeve there. Something to mind Since it's got there. the raw firepower, his strike cruisers will be at least a little more mobile if he takes the cutting laser seriously. But what does he have? Frigate, possibly a fanguard here, maybe two fanguards and two strike cruisers. I'm not sure, because yeah, for 700 points he can very easily get four strike cruisers and that kind of answers part of our question. He has what looks like to be two strike cruisers, because they sure as hell ain't battle barges with five ships in the field. So let's get on moving, let's try and do our damage, and I do have the fighters to easily deal with this, never mind the messenger too close enough to contribute. So I don't think we're seriously worried, but I don't want to fly dead on into them too, just in case, since we are relying on dice rolls to not shoot these things. And I don't feel comfortable with, th with that. Let's see, beacon. To spread the greater good. I'll keep on going, because why not? And if we at least have a gas cloud there and he's firing a second beacon. Pretty much in the same direction as the first one, so that's kind of odd. And we'll circle around the Bastion, that would be an interesting little thing. Let's circle around and see if maybe we can... Well, he's kind of going to know the Bastion's there, you would think, anyway. 
but we should dodge this beacon relative well. Maybe I turn around. And we're not going to worry about this frigate just yet. At your orders. Do I dodge this, though? Because I can start turning around once I dodge. Gonna be close, gonna be close. We dodge it just barely, though. Just barely, and I don't know where those torpedoes are going, but... They weren't going anywhere near me. Unless he want me to force me over in this direction for whatever reason. Demiog Brotherhood responding. So... Let's see, he doesn't quite see me, which is okay. I'm fine with that. And this is going to catch him completely off guard, isn't it? Because Sebastian is there, I kind of like am giving it away to a vague extent. If he was paying attention, this thing was identified. It sure as hell is identified now. I think that much is certain. So two frigates, two strike cruisers. So these two I want to... Lock on, due to damage. He does have level 10, so he's had, hasn't had the best of luck with his ships just yet. Okay. So what do we do? We just force him to supercharge with the other one instead. And can we dodge this? Probably not. Get on out. Nope. The shields are going to get disrupted. Not much I could do about that. But it's also not the priority right now, so I'm okay either way. Just gonna make sure we kill this other one. That's the chapter master. It doesn't have supercharged void shield either. And he didn't quite get the mutiny roll he was hoping. So, get turn around. Now, kill the shields. That's what I want more than anything. Because you know that silent run's gonna be short lived. It's going to be very short-lived, and I'm hitting my own messenger. That was a little bit sloppy on me as well. But now he can't hide. Oh, I take that back. I don't know why my beacon didn't stick on him, but okay. Don't ask me how that didn't stick. I thought for sure that was going to stick. It's just, well, it doesn't do that much. Because I can very easily just use my Bastion to kind of spot for me. While all the t at the same time shooting down. This, uh... These boring torpedoes. I just gotta be careful of my formation, mind you. But this he alleviates a lot. Oh, micro warp jump. So where's that coming from? Oh, coming from behind me. Okay. Now we just have to kill the shield. He did supercharge, so. So just gotta kill these shields. That's all I gotta do. And then the bastion could do its thing. It kind of can already could do its thing. Just gotta keep an eye on my charge. Come on. Teleport for me, will you? That's what I want right now, more than anything. And also fire seeker missiles. Oh, do I? No, I don't have you set to broadside. I'm wondering why the hell you're turning. And that explains it. Because you're trying to move through the damn thing, it's messing up horribly. Alright. Do a lot of damage. It doesn't have supercharged void shield, but we are hitting hard. So this thing's disengaging, so maybe we could kill the chapter master now. Bit of a weird mess, but it's a good bait and switch if nothing else, because now the chapter the battle barge isn't really doing any damage. Just gotta kill this thing quickly. Do those torpedoes do what I need them to? No, they do not. But we still get the kill. Ow. And I'm forgetting to turn off the autocast on these bat these seeker missiles yet again, so that's a bit of a pain. But let's just finish this thing off. We're looking good on damage front so far. We just need to focus. No, you are not insubordinating. And we just I kinda wanna just reload to kinda speed up my arm piercing potential. With the bombers. And let's turn off the seeker missiles again, because that's happening once more. Oh, you guys are rebelling, and I don't like it. Okay, we are looking golden. 
And yeah, Seeker Missiles are also going to hit myself because I was flying away, so... Not my proudest moment. So let's just turn... Fire on this thing. It's the only thing left, and I really gotta turn off these autocasts. They're not helping me at all, especially when I'm flying away as made apparent. I'm doing a lot more damage to myself than necessary. But with the reload, my boosters will recharge faster, so there is a plus to this, if nothing else. As the ethereals wish. Now, get ourselves turned around. Fire the bombers. We do have beacons. This time, please attach to the target. And just a fade. And don't fly closer together. That's gonna end up to end in bad ways for me. So I don't. Okay. So we do avoid a lot of damage there, but we can still hurt it. I just gotta make sure. Well, sadly, with the boosters gone, I can't do as much as I would like. But I am flying away from it, so we can't get the ram he was hoping. His shields are about to go down, and my secret missiles are gonna hit me again, aren't they? So this is gonna suck some. Or my secret... yeah. They're gonna hit me some. Unless I turn just enough. Just enough there, that's a narrow miss. If anything else. But, let's get the repairs going. We need to take these shields back down. And try and bomb this thing, because we are damn close to it now. Keep going. Why are you stopping moving? Stop rebelling. You're going to die and you're not going to get your 8th level as a result of this. Now he should be okay. He should be. He's got the movement speed. We're going to have to commit to this, though. I do have the 9-5 armor, though. So I can at least take these melee hits. If nothing else. And I got repair drones. Devil repair drones. And he doesn't have brace for impact, so arguably I'm doing more damage to him. But one extra shot is all he needs to kill these things. Well, I still feel sloppy and I don't like it. That's a bit of a shame. Still always makes for a tense match, mind you. I did like the bait and switch potential when he panicked and ran off with the battle barge, because he had the right idea and I, it opened an amazing window for me to kill his chapter master, so I did like that execution if nothing else. If nothing else. And we finally can get some belt armor on this damn level 7, because it lost its deflector in the last match, or at least last episode when I was doing the mirror match against Tau, and that caused a little bit of problems when it had 50 armor as opposed to 75. Never mind the fact any brace for impact I had up at the time wouldn't have been very effective. So, it is good to have at least that upgrade available to kind of alleviate that problem some. But that definitely ma makes it tense. I probably need to work on my execution stump. Keeping them at a distance is definitely the right idea if I'm going to try and weather them down with rail guns. But bombers definitely make easy work of the strike cruisers if they're isolate. The battle barges are a bit of a different story. Never mind the fact that they have so many point defense as well that makes them tricky to brute force that way. But they're still ultimately fun matches. Well, we got more space marines we have to contend with, and I was really hoping that for an opportunity to play with this war spear, but. Since it has no armor piercing rounds, kind of like I mentioned before, I don't think it's really warranted. I would love to show it off and put some use to it. But with a space station assault with me a defender no less, no less, that's probably really damn questionable, I'm not gonna lie. But I don't think I'm actually gonna field the Bastion this time around, although the points don't really line up very well. I do get a messenger though, which is still handy, but is this the route I want to go? Because yeah, I can get two Saucés and a Messenger this way. I don't have as much armor piercing, mind you, but I still get a lot of Railgun weaponry. Hmm. I do like this style better, it's just a question of how effective would this really be against Space Marines, since after all, we are talking about 75 armor all around with a possible Chapter Master that makes all these attacks practically useless for about 45-70 seconds, roughly. So, for the sake of taking this seriously, 
I'll give him the benefit of doubt because I'm not familiar with this player. We will go with the three protectors for at least more bombers to utilize to damage any crippled ships or at least get through that brace for impact. Since we are, after all, stuck with a space station assault, so he's going to be coming to me, and if he comes in aggressively, I may not be able to keep the space station alive long enough. Assuming, well, assuming he has the equipment to take full advantage of his bombardment cans, like the Master Gunner, and never mind the fact the Battle Barge, maybe even two, if he has some good levels on that damn thing. And to be honest, I'm not entirely certain if... I can't remember off the top of my head what Admiral level you have to be to have access to a Space Station Assault, so it's possible he may not he may not even be Admiral level 8. That's a possibility, but I'm a little bit uncertain. But let's just make some room for the Messenger here. The Castellan at least gives me some vision for a change, if nothing else. So I'm always happy to have extended sensors, although, technically, the Space Station serves the same role a little bit. Not the best, but it does serve that role. And with all these asteroid fields, like, ooh, we got a celestial body as well as two asteroid fields, so I can very easily kind of lock down these positions effectively. It's not the most convenient for placing down the mines, mind you, but I'm doing this crisscross to hopefully make it a little more awkward for him to try and fly through. If it'll deploy, let's just not get too carried away. If it slows him down, that's the intention, because let's be real. Let's be serious, it's not like these mines are ever going to do any real damage, unless he gets impatient. So it's better than nothing at least delays a direct assault. I want to feel. Monka, because I'm expecting up close and personal type of fighting, and any weapons I can destroy is going to be amazing. And he does have boring torpedoes, so let's be ready for that. And the Castellan's going to try and spot for me. Hell, I should try and get ready to use this... Was it my get beak is ready for his minefield when he does get close? It's not going to do a whole lot, probably imagine. But if I can fire secret missiles at him while he's navigating through that, he's not, he's not really going to have an easy time to dodge the missiles with boosters, at least. That's the hope. Maybe I'll get a little bit extra hits, and more than likely this is just a frigate here. So I shouldn't get too excited about throwing a beacon on this thing, but I can. It's an option. We'll see what his response is. Oh, it's not. He is a level 8, so he's got a well-experienced crew there. The ethereal so, us. we got another beacon. Let's just slow him down some more. This one is actually a target. And I'm not going to throw a beacon on this thing, right? I'm going to send a Manta Bomber over, though. I think that's warranted, because if he reveals me, that's not going to help him if he's going to commit suicide with this poor thing. Okay, and let's see, what's flying out there? Are those Thunderhawks? I'm trying to fig- oh, or were those- I'm trying to figure out what those were flying at me there. Damn. That messenger died fast, although I wasn't seeing any boring torpedoes, so I think I'm okay in that regard. Now. Let's get ready. He is using lances, so these freaks are actually gonna die really quickly. Which is kind of okay, to an extent. Although maybe I shouldn't have salt run, but let's do damage to these things. Let's cripple the weaponry too. That's why I want to, what I want to do more than anything. He's got lances on everything, so running away isn't a very good option here. But he is going to get aggressive and dangerous too. So let's deal with this one strike cruiser quickly. Actually, let's just evade entirely if we at all possible. Yeah, auto-cast lightning strike, so that easily negates it quite well. We got Manta Bombers to potentially destroy this one strike cruiser. Maybe this is a bit excessive. But can we kill this thing now? This is also the... Well, it's not the... That's not the chapter master, is it? Uh, that's the library. Master of Sancti, okay. I'm fine with that, but... Let's finish this thing off quickly. And hopefully I shouldn't need another Manta Bomber for that, since it's about to die regardless. And then I just have free damage to shoot at everything else. Finish it. Thank you. There, he's getting impatient, so now we can switch our priorities a bit. Kill the other one. He is going to do a, a very aggressive dive, so... He could still do a lot of damage to this thing, if I'm not careful. 
But sadly, repairs are going, so I'm not going to be able to deal with the temporary damage just yet. Ooh, he's getting a lot of critical hits with that said, so we need to do a lot of work quickly. And it looks like we might, so Castell, get the hell out. And those secret missiles are going to hit me, aren't they? Damn it. So that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. This thing can still do work. I'm, these, yeah, my air cache favor is not going to help in the slightest for dealing with the lances, but there's a reason why I wanted three protectors after all, and this is going to be doing a lot of damage to this thing. Especially with its weaponry now faltering, so. Okay, he's warping out. He's warping out. Well, let it live. Get his experience in. Because, what is it? One broadside weaponry is gone, so that limits a lot of the macro battery I have to deal with. And those lances are no joke. They can mess with my strategy quite a bit. If he doesn't die as quickly as he did. Because I feel like it was the bombers mostly that did that. Even though most of them were getting shot down. I feel like the bombers were still a massive co proponent to that victory. Especially since he had like after all 700 points to utilize. And he kind of suicided his Nova into me. Which doesn't help him much either. But... The lances do negate a lot of my deflector strategy, and I can't really dodge them unless I want to stay in extreme range and, well, make it difficult for him to even see me, which I could possibly do, at least against the battle barge. I, I do forfeit the battle station a little bit, though, so I need to be very wary of that, but... it was There was a tense moment there when he had all lances, because, hell, with three protectors, I can easily deal with boarding torpedoes. Excuse me, even with, uh... Especially with the battle station that contributed in that, but lances are a little more trickier because they're the one weapon that actually negates my favor with the hall field, and that's his, that's the custodian, mind you. What is it? That the forty percent accuracy drop, and I can't dodge a meter with my high speed mobility, which is the other benefit of the air cash favor. So it negates my favor. It helps punish the fact that I have lower health than most, but I did have repair drones still. If I kept all my ships together, I could outlast the storm, but that means I'm really vulnerable to getting rammed by his battle barge, never mind his strike cruisers. And again, I don't know if he had a chapter master in there, which means he would take no damage with a good brace for impact as well, once he got that chapter master trained up, so it's not like having my ships all together and outlast him while he was ramming me with repair drones would have been a good strategy, I would argue.